out of bounds play where you, where you guys got called for the turnover? Um, I was making, I was trying to make eye contact with Timmy, uh, just to let him know I was going to take the ball out, just to run a few more seconds off the clock, get a ball to the ref, just let it bounce a little bit, make sure that we had everything uh, in terms of our numbers um, to get a quality offensive possession. But the ref was like, I know what you were intending to do, but Timmy was out of bounds already. So I was trying to make eye contact with Timmy, like hold it, hold it, hold it, and I'm going to take it out of bounds and then throw it to the ref. But um, just didn't work out that way. And then. Um, but that was just a carryover from another turnover that I had pre prior to that play. So it was just, though that minute, two minute span was, was intense for us. Uh, just back and forth possessions. I got to take care of, basically I'm just saying, I got to take care of the basketball and uh, be poised down the stretch. That's the most important thing. Kirby, what are the memories, uh, the memories, the emotions that you kind of go through when you get the warm reception from these fans in this city every time you come? Oh, uh, man, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, shout out to all the Cavs fans. Um, and I don't want to just say Cavs fans, but all of Ohio. Uh, you know, 2016 is forever. I don't think anyone's touching that historical moment. Uh, but if someone does, God, God bless them, <laughs> you know. Um, but incredible memories here. Um, you know, I don't just want to focus on me being a 19-year-old kid, being drafted. I think everyone knows that history. I, I just genuinely uh, cherish all the relationships that uh, I've had. And um, in my career, and started in Cleveland. Uh, this was a franchise that was yearning for an NBA championship. Um, had a lot of emotions uh, all throughout that time, and um, we accomplished it. You know, we're one of 76 winners, championship winners. Um, you know, one of those teams that uh, I think we're going to look back on 10 years from now. We'll all be getting back together, having some wine together, having some beer, and, and really celebrating our banner. Uh, every time I come in this building, I look up at that banner and it just brings me back to all those emotions. And I'm just grateful for my time here, you know, and I really want to get that across to the Cavs fans, Cavs organization. You know, I'm truly grateful that I had the opportunity to grow up here and, um, you know, look back on my time and be really happy and be really proud. So, uh, but this young core right here is the next emerging um, crew and I wish them well. It was, it was like a championship uh, back and forth today. Felt like it, um, just the way the refs were ref the game. Um, that's no shot at them, I'm just saying. It's just a back and forth battle. Given your importance to the franchise down the road, Kyrie, chances are your jersey is going to be hanging up there in the Raptors. It's going to be retired. Yeah, um, appreciate that. How important would that be to you if that were to happen? Like, is that a ceremony you'd show up for? Is that something that would be meaningful to you? Yeah, I, I, it would be very meaningful. Um, you know, I haven't given it much thought, but... Um, you know, I'm not oblivious to all the, the social media stuff and the media uh, questions that you guys have for Donovan. I think that was warranted, but, um, you know, I don't want him to, to be answering those questions just because he's, he's new here, too, and he's just trying to establish his legacy, and I give him a lot of credit. Um, but the guys who are here, the, the individuals that were here know uh, how historic, um, you know, my time was here and, and how much I impacted the organization, impacted the city of Cleveland. Um, you know, and, I, and I've always yearned for that love, you know, from Cleveland. It's just wherever I go, even when I was traded to Boston, it's not like I, I uh, forgot all my memories during that, that time. And it wasn't uh, anything that I had against the fans or the organization. It just was my time to uh, figure out myself. And I look back on that and um, I have to deal with the, that decision uh, that I made uh, to ask for a trade. And, uh, but that that's the only part of this that I, I, I believe uh, you know, will be talked about a little bit more than I would like. You know, it's just that time. But what I like to focus on is just what we accomplished. And uh, it propelled me into the next phase of my career. And I've only gotten better because of my time that I had here, being mature at a very young age. And, um, you know, Cleveland really loved me through my mistakes. So I, I'm grateful for that. Kyrie, all losses are disappointing. But how, about, how much frustrating was this one, considering the way it went down? Uh, I think, well, I, I can honestly say that this is the first time I've lost on a half court shot, just someone shooting in three quarter court and it all and it going all net, not touching anything. Uh, so it, it's unfortunate circumstances, but we, we executed down the stretch. We gave our sense, uh, ourselves a chance uh, to win the ball game. Um, you know, I think the last play with PJ could have gone either way. It could have been a foul. It could, it could have not, you know, they didn't call it. Um, but I think in those moments, we probably just have to pick up Max Schroes a little bit higher uh, look at some of the, the minor details that 
that we could have done towards the end of the game in order to get that win. You know, what, so I, yeah. what, do you, what do you make of the uh, three pointers that Strips was making? I mean, he made like five down in the last four minutes of the game. Oh, it's not the first time that any of us have seen Max Strews hit tough shots in, <laughs> in tough games. Um, he's a big game player. I think that's why Cleveland signed him. Um, you know, he's a good spacer. He, he's a high IQ and he's played a lot of high level games. So you got to give him credit for that. Um, you know, but I, I could have gone uh, without him making that half court shot. <laughs> I think I could live with that. <laughs> Kyrie, in this building, you, you've been on the other side of those game winners. You've been the one making well, Yeah, I was those. just telling my teammates, like, you know, when we were stuck being hunted, you know, some teams would come in here and just have heck of games. And I'm trying to get my teammates to get used to that, of just being hunted all the time. And, you know, people are seeing you as a contender, and they're going to play their best game against you. So you got to give them credit to a young, hungry Cavs and they've playing well all season. Um, but tonight, I feel like there were some controllables in the fourth quarter where we allowed them to get their, their rhythm and you give a young team at home some rhythm. They're going to capitalize, which they did. Uh, there's a large Slovenian population in Cleveland, a lot of which came out to see Luka. How often have you seen an away team and player get this kind of reception here? Uh, I've seen it pretty often. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, I think the, the NBA fans uh, have evolved as well, just like the players have evolved the style of play. Um, you know, there are a lot more NBA fans that are fans of the NBA, but also very much uh, dedicated to us as players. Uh, we, we have uh, large fan groups, online presence, and even the physical presence of fans showing up to games. And uh, I think that goes hand in hand to, uh, you know, why the league or why us as players, we want to play every game because we know that sometimes when we're playing as a Western Conference team or Eastern Conference team, fans only get to see us one time. So you definitely want to give them a show. And I, and I think Luca did that tonight, 45 points, day before his uh, journey around his son for his birthday. Um, wish we could have got a win for us. Um, you know, night before his day, but we got another chance tomorrow to uh, play a better game than we did tonight. How do you flush this one out of the system and get rid of it tomorrow? Right? You don't flush it out of your system. You just, you're human. Uh, you feel it. You uh, don't ignore all the emotions that came with tonight. You see where you can get better, and then you then you make peace with it. But um, I'll be in the gym at St. Regis at 2.30 in the rise and getting ready for tomorrow's game. So I'm, I'm excited for the next 24 hours. Um, you know, but this one's got to sting a little bit. You know, you got to let some of those emotions out. You got to yell it out when you get to your, your hotel room or talk to wherever you got to talk to, and then you flush it out that way. So there's a process, you know, but as a human being right now, just leaving a game like that where we get gained by Max Strews from three-quarter court, yeah, I'm feeling it a bit right now. And what you know about this team, do they come out of a game like this and go, oh my goodness, we have to come play with the same intensity tomorrow, or are they ready to play tomorrow because of the way they lost this week? Uh, the, the Mavs, no, the Mavs? for you or guys, us? like oh, what you know about. Uh, watch film and uh, just take time to reevaluate just how we played all four quarters. And, uh, you know, we, we looked at our segment towards the end of the game and, and we were really happy with that. We, we executed, we gave ourselves a chance to win down the stretch. We may not have played well for full 48 minutes, but um, we gave ourselves a chance to win. But 38 and 37 points respectively in the fourth quarter. It's a lot of freaking points in the NBA game. Um, you know, so the team that got the, the stop towards the end won the basketball game and you know they, they had a chance to win and they capitalized. Thanks.